Starlink now has direct to sell. You can use your cell phone with T-Mobile. If you have T-Mobile, you can use your cell phone through a Starlink satellite to connect to pretty much anywhere else, any anyone else on the planet with a smartphone or with a phone, with a landline phone, whatever kind of phone there is. I got a message from someone on Facebook asking me if this was a threat to ham radio, to which my answer is no. And in this video, I'm going to tell you why I think that. Okay, this is a Facebook message from Clayton Watts, and I, when he sent me this message, I, I read it a couple of times, and I'm like, you know, I don't think he's trying to troll me. I think he's asking a genuine question. I'm glad he reached out to me and asked this, because it made me think, it gave me an idea for this video, and it made me gather my thoughts. Now, I have Starlink. I have said this before a couple times. I have Starlink. I use it at my hunting lease. Uh, hunting season in Texas starts in about two weeks from the time of this recording. I plan on setting it up and leaving it there and leaving it for about two and a half months. I've got some cool off-grid running your whole deer camp because there's no, there's no facilities at the deer lease at all. It is total boondocking. And so I've got some videos planned for running your whole deer camp on an EcoFlow battery with Starlink and with cameras and et cetera, et cetera. So be watching my Unplugged channel for that. But I am not opposed to Starlink. I'm a fan of Starlink, okay? And I still have the original RV dish, which I want to upgrade it to the mini because I'm told it's 12 volts. So more to come on that later. I've done a few Starlink videos on my Unplugged channel, so go check that out when you have time. But today, this comment is what got me to thinking, okay? So he says, I have a question. If Elon Musk comes out with a $100 smartphone with Starlink, what is going to happen to ham radio? And my response is nothing. Satellite phones exist now. They still require a network to use and don't work point to point. Plus, you can only call one person at a time. And he replies back. And this, this conversation took place over the course of like maybe a day and a half, something like that. He's like, that's true. And he meant to write but there. But he was talking about point to point all over the world between Starlink, Starlink satellites. I was watching him on X talking about it. That would be cool if we had a ham portable connected to Starlink too. Yes, that would be cool. That would be really uh, kind of fun to get uh, a ham radio slash Starlink smartphone. I know somebody who with a smartphone company. Maybe I'll reach out to him. <laughs> and uh, my reply back to him was, ham satellites exist now, but not in the LEO low Earth orbit style. At least I don't think there's any low Earth orbit. Even if there are, they're not internet capable, typically speaking. Okay. He might have said something about point to point, but he's not talking about the same thing I am. You still need the satellite network to use the phone. So, and then he links me in this video, SpaceX Starlink is here, whatnot. And we're going to watch that video here in just one second. So when I say point to point, he wasn't understanding what I was saying about point to point. They're using the term point to point in the Starlink video, but they're talking about something different. When I say point to point, what I'm talking about is one radio talking to another radio with no network in between the two devices, okay? You cannot take a smartphone like this. My flashlight's on. I forgot my flashlight was on. You cannot take a smartphone like this and call direct to, another, to a person with an, another smartphone without some sort of network in between the two. The same exists for Starlink, okay? You cannot use a Starlink router... I mean, shoot, there's still places in the United States where Starlink doesn't work, and the Starlink website will tell you that. But you can't use a smartphone over Starlink without that Starlink satellite in the sky. So it's still a man-made network that is required for the Starlink system to work together, okay? You can't take a smartphone from Starlink and call directly to another smartphone from Starlink or a T-Mobile phone if you're using the Starlink network, then you're using the satellites that are in orbit. If you're using a radio, CB radio, GMRS radio, marine band radio, doesn't matter. If you're using a radio, there's no network in between you and the other station required. There's no internet required. There's no 4G, 5G service required. There's no cell service required. There's no satellite required. There's no landline required. There's nothing. The only thing you need is an atmosphere. You need a power supply, which a smartphone uh, needs also. You need an antenna, which your smartphone has. Even if it's built in, you can't see it. It's inside the case. And you need an atmosphere for radio. In fact, you don't even really need an atmosphere. That's how Voyager 1 and 2 are still transmitting radio messages back to Earth two or three decades after they were launched. I looked up Voyager 2 a while back. Some cool stuff there. I might do a video on it later. But 
Starlink still requires you to have a network of satellites in between you and the station you're calling. And you can only call one person at a time. I guess they could set up like group calls or community chats or something like that where you can call into like, say like a conference room or something like that, like at work. Like you call into a conference phone number and dial a passcode to get in the conference room and then there's 20 or 30 people in there. I guess they could set up something like that that someone could monitor 24-7 for emergencies over Starlink. Might be kind of a fun idea. But... Typically speaking, when you pick up your smartphone and dial a number, you're dialing one other person. When you pick up your radio and talk, you're talking to anybody who can hear you. All right, this is the video he sent me. I'm go It's from a, uh, a guy called Jay Christina. Um, he's a fairly decent-sized channel. This is not someone I'd heard of. This video is about a year old, okay? So this uh, direct-to-sell thing from Starlink is at least a year old. And he talks about that a little bit in this video, but I don't really know this guy. I didn't, I don't know much about him. So we're going to watch this one part of this video, but I'll link it below. You guys can go check it out later if you want to. Or coastal waters. Direct to sell will also connect IOT or Internet of Things devices with common LTE standards. Now keep this in mind what they're saying here. Land, lakes, or coastal waters. That's a very interesting comment. What that means is you'll be able to use it on land, but you're not going to be able to use it at sea. So much like a cell phone network, you will be able to use this direct. He's talking about direct to cell right now. That's what he's talking about. In fact, he links it earlier in the video. He's talking about how direct to sell was announced and then they just kind of stopped talking about it for a while. But then he's like, if you go to starlink.com, which is right here, and you go to the business tab at the top right, okay, this is when you go to starlink.com, most people are going to be on the personal page right here. This is just starlink.com. You click on business at the top. It goes to starlink.com slash business in the URL right there. And then in the business section over here on the far right-hand side, it says direct to sell. And that's what this is, Starlink direct to sell. Seamless access to text, voice, and data for LTE phones across the globe. The Starlink direct to sell launch campaign is underway. So it's not really done yet, I guess. I will also say that this path, and I've said this in other videos recently, recently as this month, actually, this is October of 2024. In July of 2024, we traveled to Yellowstone and we spent four nights at Yellowstone National Park for the purposes of camping in POTA. And I took my Starlink with me and it worked great for internet while we were at the campsite. Now, I don't have T-Mobile. And if I'd known about this, Kyle has T-Mobile. I might have gotten him to try this. But I've been wanting to kind of get... I, I found a, a good deal on a T-Mobile SIM card, and I've been wanting to get a SIM card from one of my um, Android phone devices. So I might do that. We might do some testing on that later. Um, again, I put some Starlink ch uh, videos on my Unplugged channel, so I'll probably do it over there, but I'll let you guys know about it. I would make phone calls to my wife over uh, Wi-Fi calling because there was no cell service for AT&T inside of uh, Yellowstone National Park. But I could get internet through Starlink, and I could make phone calls to my wife through Wi-Fi calling uh, AT&T, but it would constantly drop. Like, I would be talking, and then it would just kind of go quiet, and then you'd hear this beep, and it would drop, and I'd call her back. She's like, yeah, this is the last thing I heard. So we were able to communicate. It worked. I was able to call her, tell her what's going on, tell her everything's good, tell her how my day went. She was telling me how things went at home. Great. So communication took place. We were not dead in the water, unable to communicate between us. Communication took place, and that's really kind of the goal. But it constantly dropped, and it did not. It's it was not seamless, as they're 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 claiming seamless right here. Now now once again, I was on AT and T. I don't have T Mobile, so this is going to warrant some further testing. But I'm curious about. I, I want you guys to hear what this guy has to say further. So they are making this distinction between the two. So if I'm in the middle of Florida, for example, and I'm on Lake Okeechobee and I'm fishing, well, I can use it there. Also holds true if I'm fishing, for example, on a pier on the coast line someplace, I can also use it there as well as anywhere on land. But if I'm on a boat, 
I cannot use it. That is not the location that it will work. So this is the way they're kind of, I guess, segregating the coverage and saying that if you want this coverage, most likely they'll be able to give it to you, but maybe there'll be a maritime version of this cell to satellite coverage, let's call it. Anyways, let's get back over to the site. It says text will be starting in 2024, voice and data available starting in 2025, and IoT, which is Internet of Things, starting in 2025 also. Okay, so good. So we have text this right now and voice and data starting next year sometime. So we're going to have to keep a watch over that and see exactly what they're planning to release from Starlink for this purpose. So I've got, I've got a couple of thoughts about that I'm going to share with you guys. First, let me tell you about PCBWay.com. They are sponsoring today's video. You can get all kinds of professional printing done, 3D printing, CNC machine printing, injection molding, circuit board printing. You can you can get it all done at PCBWay.com. They offer many, many different versions of PCB boards, different materials for 3D printing and injection molding, and you can just order it right online, send them your files, they send you a product, and you're done. So bring your ideas to life with PCBWay.com. And if you do end up using some of their services, be sure to tell them that Ham Radio 2.0 sent you. Thank you, PCBWay, for supporting this channel. So point to point is what they're talking, as far as I know, as far as I can tell, point to point does not mean calling someone directly from phone to phone without using the Starlink network. You still have to use the Starlink satellites that are in the sky, that are in orbit, to use a Starlink smartphone if if they do release one or use your T-Mobile smartphone, okay? So you still need that network in the sky. And unlike radio, radio doesn't require a network in the sky, in the ground, on a cell tower, any anywhere like that at all, okay? So I like Starlink. I enjoy using mine. I think it's provided some valuable coverage for internet in certain places, and I'm excited to see how it grows. But as far as a replacement for radio, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's there because. And here's here's the main here's the main point I want to press today. What if something were to happen, Armageddon slash Deep Impact movie type stuff, and some asteroid were to crash into these satellites in the sky? Okay, so you would be down satellites what if some hacker hacked into the system and got a hold of the network and started turning stuff off and not allowing people to communicate worse yet worst scenario i can think of worse than both of those in my opinion what if the government takes over starlink somehow gets a hold of it confiscates it corporate espionages it something the government not even the u.s government what if what if some chinese government buys it some other kind of f foreign interest by Starlink that um, does not have the American public, does not have our best interest in mind. What if they buy it and shut it down on us? What if somebody takes the Starlink network and shuts out all of the access devices that it has and uses it for their own gain? Some kind of military deployment, some sort of terrorist activity? I mean, it's possible. Because it's a network that can be hacked and compromised and destroyed like any other network on the planet. Yes, it's in space. It's a little bit easier to, or a little bit harder to access, gain access to. I get that. Okay. And the likelihood of everything I just said is, 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 is small, but not impossible. Well, with radio, you don't have that because no one can steal the atmosphere from you. You're always going to be able to transmit with radio. Now, there's I've had some other comments on other videos about how there's there, there's these jamming devices that'll jam radio signals and you won't be able to use radio if we get invaded because they'll have all these jamming devices. Okay, I can see the possibility for that, but if that happens for radio, it's going to happen for your smartphone too. They're going to jam smartphones and internet devices long before they jam CB radios and ham radios because there's more people with smartphones and internet devices than there are with actual two-way radios. So if you're talking about a jamming situation, anything can be jammed. Your radio can be jammed, your smartphone can be jammed, your maritime radios, your marine radios, your CB radios, all of this can be jammed. But with a net, with any type of service, 4G, 5G, internet, Starlink, anything that requires an external network, an external man-made network at that, to go in between you and the other station you're trying to call, 
There's just that extra step, that extra thing in there that's available to fail or available to be taken over and shut down that you don't have with radio. So no, there's no there's no threat to amateur radio with this system. I think more communication is a good thing. I have said before many times that if you are building a go bag, a bug out bag, a go bag, whatever, this should be one of the first things you put in your go bag. In fact, if you have an extra one of these with an extra SIM card, you should put that in your go bag and leave it there all the time with a charger to make sure your battery's charged up or that you can charge your battery on the road. This is an excellent emergency communications tool, but it's not a very effective one. If this is up and working, this is what you should be using to call 911, call police and fire personnel, call EMS. This is what you should be using, everybody, if this is working. But like we've seen in hurricanes in 2024 and prior to 2024, cell networks can go down really fast. Internet can go down really fast. And while Starlink is not going to be affected by hurricanes and tornadoes per se, it's still a man-made network that can be hacked nefariously compromised or destroyed by some outside force that uh, that we're not planning on right now. So I'm my vote is still for two-way radio, still the best communication tool on the planet. But uh, you're probably going to see me buying some, uh, doing some Starlink upgrades and doing some videos on that also. Thanks for watching today, guys. I would like to know your comments, your thoughts on this subject. And if you enjoyed this video, then uh, YouTube thinks that you would enjoy this next video coming up right over here, 73.